Okay, so let's have a look at the Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths Paper 1, 2022, and this is question 5. So in part A here we have a function g of x, and it's equal to x squared minus 1 over x. Uh, find g prime x, the derivative of g of x. Okay, so we've just got to differentiate this, uh, this function here. So our function is g of x is equal to x squared minus x to the power of minus 1. Remember, 1 over x to the power of plus 1 is equal to x to the power of minus 1. So we want g prime x. So bring down the power. Reduce the power by 1. Bring down the power. So minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. And then we'll have an x here. And then reduce the power by 1. So that'll bring it down to minus 2. So we can rewrite that as 2x plus 1 over x squared. And that's it for part A. Okay, part B1. f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 21x squared plus 40x plus 63. x is real. x plus 1 is a factor of f of x. Find three values of x for which f of x is equal to 0. Okay, so there are a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, the first way I'm going to do it, I'll do it both ways, but um, one way is just by long division. So we just take, we're told that x plus 1 is a factor, which means it divides in evenly. So we take x plus 1, and we divide that into our function. So our function is 2x cubed minus 21x squared plus 40x plus 63. It should go in evenly, and we should end up with a quadratic up here, which we can factorize further. Find our other two factors, and then... Uh, we want to, yeah, we want to find the roots, the three roots from our three factors. Okay, so uh, let's do that then. Um, now, x into 2x cubed is 2x squared. So multiply now, you get 2x cubed plus 2x squared. Put a line underneath and subtract. So that will give us zero. This will become a minus, so we end up here with minus 23x squared. Bring down the 40x and start again. x into minus 23x squared is minus 23x. Now we multiply this by these two and put our answer down here. So minus 23x squared minus times plus is minus 23x. Put a line underneath, subtract again, this will give us zero. This will become plus, so we get 40, 50, 63 x. Bring down the 63, so that's handy. Divide the x into 63 x, you get plus 63. Now multiply the 63 by this, put our answer underneath, so you get 63 x plus 63. Again, you can see here that that will give us zero, this will give us zero, so we get zero remainder. Okay, so when we divide this into this, we get this quadratic up here. So let's just have a look at that. So we have 2x squared minus 23x plus 63. So that there multiplied by our x plus 1 will give us this here. Now, if we, we want to see where that's equal to 0, uh, we want to factorize this here. So that'll give us 2x here and x here. 63 then will be 7, 9. So let's put the 9 here, the 7 here. We've got an x plus 1 out here. So let's see, will that work? We've got a 9 plus 2 7s, 14, will give us 23. So that's fine. So we want a plus 63, so I'm going to put minus minus here because we have a minus here. And I think that should be it. Now, if those three give us zero, that means here then that x is equal to 9 over 2, 7, and minus 1. So each of these, that's equal to zero, that's equal to zero, that's equal to zero. Solve each of those and you'll get x is equal to these three here. Now, let's just see what we were actually asked to do. Uh, x plus 1 is a factor, so that's fine. Find the three values of x for which f of x is equal to 0. So this is our, this is our f of x here. 
this quadratic that we found multiplied by our x plus 1 is our cubic. They say let it equal to 0, so we just factorize our quadratic. We already had a factor here, which we were given in the question, and just solve each of those. Let that equal to 0, that equal to 0, that equal to 0, and solve for x. So there are three roots, and that's all we were asked to do. Find the three values of x for which y is equal to 0. Now I should say here there is a, another way of doing this instead of doing long division. Some people don't like the long division way of doing these things. So you can do this kind of multiplying version uh, as well. I'll, I'll just do it here. So this is another way of doing it. I find it a little bit longer. I prefer the long division, but maybe that's just me. Let's have a look. We have x plus 1. Now we know that if we multiply that by some quadratic, let's say ax squared plus bx plus c, if we multiply those two together, we should get this here. Okay? So that would be equal to our 2x cubed and so on. Now let's just multiply this out. So if we multiply this out here we get ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx. So that's multiplying these three here. Now multiplying it by 1 we'll get uh, plus ax squared plus bx plus c. Now let's just put the x squared together and factorize them. So we have ax cubed. We've got these two here, so that's a plus b x squared. We've got two lots of x's here as well. We've got c plus b. I will say b plus c, put it in alphabetical order, times x plus c. So there's our cubic there, okay? That's our cubic expression. And we know that that's equal to, that is equal to 2 x cubed plus, no minus actually, 21 x squared plus 40 x plus 63. So what you can do here is just equate the coefficients here. So if you do that you get a is equal to 2, a plus b is equal to minus 21, you've got b plus c is equal to 40, and you have c is equal to c is equal to 63. So we can work out a, b, and c here. So if we look at this one here, if a is equal to 2, that gives us b is equal to minus 23. If b is equal to minus 23, that'll give us c is equal to 40, 50, 63, and c is equal to 63. We can see that here anyway. So our quadratic then would be uh, 2, remember this was, our, this was our quadratic here, so if we take that and bring it down here and put in a, or a, b, and c, we'll get 2x squared, because a is 2, b is minus 23, so it's minus 23x, and our c is plus 63, plus 63, so that would be this here or this up here either. And then after that then, you can just continue on you can go and do all of this here to find the three roots. Okay, so that's just an alternative way of finding this, this quadratic up here. Okay, so let's move on to the next part of the question then. Um, so this is part two, find the range of values of x for which f prime x is negative, correct to two decimal places. Our f of x, our f of x is two uh, x cubed minus 21 x squared plus 40x plus 63. If we differentiate that, we'll get 236x squared minus 42x plus 40. So we want to take this here and it needs to be, it's telling, it's telling, it's telling us here that it's negative. So we want 6x squared minus 42x plus 40 to be less than 0. So we've got to solve this inequality in other words. Okay, so we have to solve this inequality, so let's do it then. The first thing I can see that I can do here is divide across by 2. So I'll have 3x squared here minus 21x plus 20, less than 0. And what we normally do when we solve these inequalities is to find the roots first of all, to find where this uh, is not less than zero, but where it's equal to zero first. So we can draw a little sketch 
of our quadratic and find our two roots. So let's uh, let 3x squared minus 21x plus 20 equal to 0 first. Uh, now we've got to solve this. The problem with this is that it says give your answer correct to two decimal places, which would indicate that when we do this, we, we can't do it by just you know factorizing the normal way by putting in two brackets here. This is what we would normally do it would indicate that we need to use the minus b formula or the quadratic formula. So in this particular case, a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus 21, and c is equal to 20. So we know here that x is equal to minus b, so that's 21, minus minus is plus, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so it's minus 21 squared, minus 4 times a times c. And that's all over 2a. 2 times 3. Now when you do that uh, underneath the square root there you'll get 201 and when you work that out you will get uh, 5.86 and you'll also get uh, 1.14. So if we were to draw that, now that's the two decimal places by the way, so if we were to draw that sketch, uh, the sketch of that graph we would be looking at something like this here. And we would have, remember, this is what we want to solve here. This is what we want to solve. So we want to know where is y less than 0. We want y less than 0. This is y here. y is less than 0. Less than 0. Well, we have our two endpoints here. We have this here is 1.14 here and over here we've got 5.86 so this is 1.140 and this is 5.860 so we want um, we know that it's less than 0 so we don't include those two so just put a little circle there don't fill it in and we want to know where, where are all the y values on this graph here where are all the y values negative well all the y values are negative down here Okay, this is where all these points have negative y values. Okay, so we want to solve for x now, remember, not y. So what does that mean? That means we want to know what x values give us these, these y values down here. What x, what x values give us these y values down here? Well, it's just these x values in here. So these are the x values that we need to we need to put into our solution. Okay, so our answer then finally is going to be, so our answer is x has to be, well it has to be this way, bigger than uh, one point, bigger than 1.14 and then this way as well less than, less than 5.86 and that's our solution to this part of the question. I think that's all we were asked to do. Let me just double check that. Find the range of values of x for which f prime x is negative, correct to two decimal places. Uh, we've done that. Okay, so that's it for this particular question.